Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to give you a crash course in using Midjourney, an incredible tool that can take text prompts, like this one right here, and turn it to the image that you see on the right side. We can do highly illustrated stylized things or photorealistic images. I can ask for simple things like a textured illustration of three mangoes falling in the air, or more complicated images like this render of a cafe. Here's a few more quick examples. This watercolor bee with some geometric designs, this Andy Warhol-esque pop art piece. We can get it to generate logos and icons and emoji looking things, and even repeating patterns like this wallpaper here. If you're interested in really diving into Midjourney and ChatGPT, you can check out the course I just released on those topics, which is now Udemy's highest rated course on ChatGPT and Midjourney. I'll talk more about it at the end. It's really easy to get started generating images with Midjourney, but it's a bit of a dark art uh, to master it. There are tons of different parameters and things we can control, different strategies for prompting, different types of prompts, different commands. We don't have time to go over all of that in this video, but just know that they exist. If you want to follow along, you have to start by getting an account. And unfortunately, Midjourney doesn't currently offer a free trial. They suspended free trials largely because of abuse, I think. Um, and that means you have to pay for it if you want to use it. I definitely get my money's worth in my day-to-day -day life. As a teacher, as a YouTuber, I use Midjourney constantly to make assets. So if you go to their website, click on join the beta, you'll be prompted to create an account, sign up, and eventually you'll end up here, the Midjourney Discord server. The only way to communicate with the Midjourney model is through the Midjourney bot, which is a Discord bot. So you have to have a Discord account. It will make you sign up for one if you don't. And you'll end up in this very crazy server that has millions of people in it. You'll see all sorts of different assets people are generating. It's kind of overwhelming. So what I like to do is immediately direct message the Midjourney bot. You can right click message. And this allows me to have a conversation with the bot itself. It doesn't mean that these images are private in any way. They're still publicly viewable on the Midjourney website, but it's way more manageable to not have millions of people chatting with the bot at the same time. I can actually see what I'm doing. It won't scroll by. So you can see my history here. I've been using Midjourney for months to make all sorts of assets. So let's talk about how we actually use Midjourney. We talk to the bot using different commands. And the most important command by far is forward slash imagine. If you go into any chat uh, in Discord that has access to the bot and you type slash, even just slash I, you'll see slash imagine appear. And slash imagine is going to expect us to provide a prompt, a text prompt. And that could be something super simple like watercolor butterfly, or even a little more complicated, a risograph of ocean scenes, sunset, cliffs, pine trees. A risograph is, a screen, I think, a screen printing technique. Um, or it can be much, much longer, as you saw some of my previous examples. But you provide your text prompt in there, and then it will generate a grid of four images. By default, they're all square images. We can change that. And so here's watercolor butterfly. Here is risograph of ocean scene, sunset, whatever, cliffs, pine trees. You can see it's a very different result using that risograph keyword. Okay, so I want a stock photograph. I'm making some slides, and for one of my courses, I want a stock photograph of woman in disbelief. And I'm going to say white background. And then this takes usually about... Well, it actually varies, but 20 to 40 seconds, you'll see that these images start to appear. Here they are coming in. You can see it updates me on the percentage, how complete it is. Okay, so that finished up and it generates me this grid of four images all together. So I don't have any of the images isolated yet. The next decision I make is if I'm happy with any of these images, if I am, I can click one of these upscale buttons here, U1, U2, U3, and U4. So the numbering goes one in the top left, and then two in the top right, three, and then four in the bottom right. So I can select one of these buttons, and what it will do is isolate one of these images so that I can then download it or optionally generate variations based upon it. And if I'm not happy with any of these, I can click this button here just to regenerate the entire grid. It will run the original prompt again. I can also click one of these V buttons to generate variations based upon one of these images. Like maybe um, I like this one down here, but I want to see if we can get some variations based upon it. So this is number four, number one, two, three, four. 
so I can click the V4 button, and this will generate me a new grid that are variations upon this particular image. Okay, so I'll be back when those finish up. So here is the grid of the brand new regeneration of the entire prompt. When I clicked this button here, four completely separate images, all stock photographs of a woman in disbelief on a white background. Now down here is the result of me clicking this V4 button to create variations upon this particular image. And notice, you know, the composition here, she's centered, she's got, I don't know how to describe this hair, <laughs> she's got her mouth open, very wide eyes, um, and when I generate variations on that, they are definitely different, but it's all pretty similar. It looks like, maybe not exactly the same woman, but similar features, similar facial expression, similar hair, the exact same composition, but the clothing has changed, and some aspects have changed, right? It's not a carbon copy. So if I like one of these, maybe I like this one the best down here. I know maybe this one. I can isolate this one and get it on its own. Because right now, if I try and right click and save this image, it saves me a full grid, which I usually don't want. I want the complete image on its own. So this is number three, one, two, three, four. So number three, I'll click upscale three. And it doesn't actually upscale an image. It doesn't increase its resolution uh, with the newer versions of Midjourney. It used to. Now what it does is it just isolates an image. All images originally are 1024 by 1024 pixels. So now I can take this image and save it. And now I can use the image however I want. Maybe I'll use Canva to remove the background. I've uploaded it to my deck of slides. I've put it on a slide. And then I can remove the background. And maybe I'm happy with that. I could, of course, tweak it. But that's how I use Midjourney to help me with my slides. You can see this all over the place. This was made with Midjourney. This was made with Midjourney. This was... Anyway, so in addition to the actual text prompt that we provide, there's a whole series of parameters that we can use to control the Imagine command. And these parameters go at the end of the command, after the prompt, and they all start with two dashes. The most important one that I'll show you to start is AR, which is short for Aspect Ratio. So the default that we've seen so far is that we get square images, but we can change that. So instead of a one by one aspect ratio, we can do a three by two or 16 nine. But there are many other parameters, including things like chaos and stylize and style and tile and a whole bunch of others we don't have time to cover. Okay, so let's say I'm trying to make a YouTube thumbnail for this video on Midjourney, And I want something that is along the lines of, I don't know, um, imagination, colorful, maybe I'll use that risograph term again because I like the screen print stylized look, risograph of imagination, and maybe I'll throw nature in there, and then camera to symbolize mid-journey. Mid-journey tends to work better when you don't use full sentences, but instead just a bunch of little concepts and ideas. So if I just hit enter right now, this will generate me square images. So I'm going to rerun my prompt, and at the very end, I'm going to put dash dash AR for aspect ratio. And then a YouTube thumbnail, I believe, is 16 by 9. So maybe I'll do that twice. So the original prompt finished up. You can see that we do, in fact, get a grid of square images, one by one. And now I'm starting to get some of the 16 by 9 images coming in. You can see that they are definitely a different aspect ratio. And here's from the second time I ran the prompt. So one thing you need to know with Midjourney is that it often takes a lot of iterations and trial to get something that you're happy with. But once you find something like, I kind of like this one with the camera in the middle, the colorful landscape, nature, I'm going to upscale it. This one is image number two right here, so I'm going to click upscale two. Okay, and here's the upscaled version. Now I can use this as is, I can right click, save that image, or I can create variations on it. So once you upscale an image, you have a bunch of new different choices. I can zoom out of this image. I can upscale it strong, upscale it, or rather vary it strong or subtle. So I'll do both of those. You'll see a subtle variation, a strong variation. And then let's do a big zoom out. I'll zoom out two times. And when I zoom out, it will start painting new stuff around this, keeping the original image the same. And while we're here, I'll show you the pan functionality. If I click this button, I can pan down or up or left or right and I'll start with panning down and this will generate me a new image that includes new content below the original. So here's the subtle variations 
where the, it looks like the camera is changing, the clouds and some of the colors change, but it's pretty similar, right? Very similar composition, same fantasy world, same style. And then here's the stronger variations. So the composition starts to change a bit, right? There's a river in this one with a camera, but the camera is no longer centered. This camera is not centered either. The camera is very different. So similar feel, right? It's clearly based on that original image, but it's a stronger variation compared to these more subtle ones right here, where it's pretty similar, big circle, sun in the background, similar clouds, a camera in the middle, but the camera itself changes. Here's what happened when I clicked zoom out. So it kept that original image in the middle, but it adds a whole bunch of stuff around it. These are pretty cool actually, although I think for my purposes, I want the camera to be large and front and center, but I do like these. This one even added a person in. And then here's the result of panning down. It keeps the original image there at the top. So all of them are gonna look the same at the top, but then it adds content it fills in down below. So as I said at the beginning, there's a lot to Mid Journey. There's a lot of different parameters. We saw one aspect ratio, there are many more. There are different commands we can use instead of just imagine. We have blend. We also can do image prompts. We have things like remix mode. There's a lot of stuff that we just didn't have time to cover. So you can check that out on your own. You can also check out the course I released on ChatGPT and MidJourney. Again, not to be too sales many, but it's the highest rated course on these topics on Udemy, which I think means something. I work really hard to make these courses good. And there's a coupon in the description below. Oh, and here's the YouTube thumbnail I generated for this very video using the image that we created using MidJourney.